just touched down in LA from a post on Instagram. I thought that I would be the one to pick you up. I never had to find a reason to get out my phone and call. Now I can't even think of one. Oh, you were lying when you said that we'd be stupid not to try. Are you sure that there aren't feelings you're denying? Oh, why can't I? Does it scare you that I thought you were the one? But you just need a friend right now. Yeah. You just need a friend right now. It's so true that you just need a friend right now. But I want what I want. Yeah, I thought I'd be more than a friend by now. But you just want a friend right now. There's a thousand reasons this won't work. I can count the ways we'll crash and burn. There's a thousand reasons not to try, but it's one enough to change your mind. 'Cause life is full of wasted moments that fell right, and don't we have enough for us to die for? How are you doing, Caleb? I'm great, man. How are you? Can you hear me okay? Man, yeah, you can hear you great. You look great. Great compound. Where are you coming to us from, Caleb? Yeah, uh, I am in Nashville, Tennessee right now. Very so, cool. Very yeah. cool. So is that like your writing room where you are right now? Is that like your creativity um, room? This is, this is my little studio that I have set up here in Nashville. I don't do too much. Like, I mean, I write on my own in here, but... Um, a lot of times I'm I'm going around the city and meeting with people with better studios than me. But this is just right, enough right. <laughs> to uh, this is just enough to if I need to record a vocal or do something like that, it's it's good enough for that kind of stuff. So absolutely, Caleb. And by, by the way, what a talent, Caleb Hearn. What a voice. One of the future faces of Nashville. Uh, you know, I mean, hearing stuff like you know half as good as her, or your upcoming single "One Day You Will." Man, we are in good hands, Caleb. So thank you on behalf thank of you. you know music appreciators worldwide. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. What? Tell me again. Where? Where you got? Where are you from right now? Or where are you? I'm in Nashville. From? I'm in Nashville, actually. Yeah. Oh, our, okay. our studio is located in the in the Gulch. Yeah. So nice. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. And by the way, you know, one of our good friends, Ron Pope, also a Nashville resident. Yep. He's uh, he's very excited to take you on the road. Are you excited to go on tour with him for like you know twelve dates? I'm I'm so pumped, man. I I'm. Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm nervous, but I'm so pumped. I'm so excited to finally like get out there and like you know I I did a small little run back in the fall and right. it was amazing. It was so fun, but you know getting out there and seeing a bigger crowd like this, I, I'm really thrilled. You know, um, so yeah, I'm I'm just so blessed, so pumped for it. Totally. So how do you get ready for like 12 days like this, 12 dates like this, I should say, Caleb, like besides the simple packing, like stuff and the instruments and the clothes, what yeah. other like stuff, like, is it mentally, is it learning the songs? Like what does getting ready mean for you? Yeah, man. Uh, that's a great question. I um, honestly, this one's a little different. Uh, I, I've never played guitar or really instrument, any instrument uh, for myself live before. Um, you know, I, I've never really, I've never been like a guitar wizard or anything. So when I was talking to Ron Pope about it, um, you know, he mentioned it'll just be me. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> right. He was like, well, it's just you and a guitar. If that's cool. And I'm like, uh, I haven't even told him this yet, but I was like, okay, well, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so <laughs> I have been, <laughs> I've, I've been working really, really hard uh, to, to get ready for it. Um, I'm, I'm feeling good. Um, so yeah. So yeah, it's really just, you know, obviously the packing, my clothes, all that kind of stuff. But really for me, it's been a mental thing. It's like mm -hmm. getting myself mentally prepared to be on the road that long. Absolutely. And also, um, and also just feel confident in, in my own skills to deliver. Um, Cause typically, you know, I've always had a band behind me where my job is to get the vocal out and get the message across lyrically. But now with a guitar in my hand, I'm going to be just as much, on the music side of it, of, you know, getting that, getting that across as well. So there's a, there's a new element I'm adding to the, to the, to the process here. So that's the yeah. been my biggest focus on this for this tour. 
So because it's it's almost like you're like standing there naked in a way, right, Caleb? Like if yeah. you if you mess up a chord or something, you don't have the the bass mm-hmm. player or, or or your guitar guy to bail you out. Exactly, exactly. You know, yeah. like I, I have no one to turn around and be like, well, up to you. You know, it's <laughs> right, just right. me. You know, there's no one. Yeah. So th- which is gonna be a great experience for me. You know, I already I'm already prepared. I'm already pre- I think mentally it's it's really important to go ahead and prepare yourself to maybe mess up. If you mess up, it's gonna, you know, that kind of stuff happens. And um, I think it's, for me, it was like, oh, I can't mess up. I can't mess up. I can't mess up. I think now I've kind of shifted my mindset to if I do, it's okay. Just keep going, you know, right. because we're all human and that, and that kind of stuff happens. You even see that with like people like John Mayer every once in a while, but they keep oh, going. Sure. They're, they're always mentally prepared for that. So for me, that's something that I'm like, figuring out and I've got, you know, a little bit more time to do that, but, um, but overall I'm excited, man. It's, it's a great opportunity. Man, it's going to be great. Uh, people should catch that tour. And Caleb, you know, there's a lot of things that we love about you, but my personal favorite just on research is that you're a basketball guy. You know, I love <laughs> yeah. basketball. I, I'm, a, I'm a Miami boy. So I bleed Miami heat and you were yeah. a great player for like East Surrey high, right? In North Carolina. I wouldn't say great player, but I played, I, I, I was played uh, junior varsity. Come on. I did. I did. Uh, I played JV, j- junior varsity, freshman, sophomore year. And then I played varsity, j- uh, junior, senior. There you and, go. Um, I honestly, I took it really seriously. I loved it so much. I, I, my, honestly, my dream was to go play college. So I was uh, really, really um, into it. I still play locally just for fun. Um, it's a good workout and that kind of thing. And then I'm also a massive college basketball fan. I'm from North Carolina. So I watch, I'm a big Duke fan. Um, so I'm into all of that, uh, NBA as well. I love LeBron. I'm a big Lakers fan. Um, so, you know, it, yeah, I mean, you're, you're huge really basketball. Good. What, what's that? You're, you're great. There's some highlights in there. I, I think, I think there was one, uh, like versus like Elkin, <laughs> yeah. like they, they try to like inbound and you come off like the blind side and you just steal that ball. And you just get in the paint and do like a hook shot. Like, it's like the most incredible thing, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I cannot, I've, never, I've never had someone find that. That's amazing. <laughs> but the reason I, I bring it it, 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 it was a great play. But the reason I bring it, uh, Caleb, is, you know, are there similarities? I would think there's some similarities with just like the discipline and the daily habits that made yeah. you a great player to like, you know, consistently be a good songwriter, right? Absolutely. 100%. I think... Uh, you know, growing up playing, I started basketball when I was like five years old. So growing up uh, playing a sport like that and learning the teamwork of it. And the, I think what it, what it really helped me with so much is learning to be on a team. And I know that sounds weird with like music, but a lot of songs and a lot of, a lot, the beginning stages of a song, a lot of times you're writing with other people. You're um, in a room with, even though, you know, there's five players on a court, but you're in a room sometimes with four people, four or five even, um, and knowing that everyone has a skill set that can bring something to the table um, is really, really important. And I think that's kind of something I learned from basketball, me being like a point guard or a shooting guard. I was like, well, my two things are probably going to be, you know, dribbling and shooting, you know, out from outside. That's probably going to be my expertise. And mm-hmm. also noticing that my friend over here who's six inches taller than me is going to be better at scoring inside the paint and getting rebounds. Right. And same thing with music. It's like, you know, I go into these sessions and, you know, this guy's playing guitar and he's incredible. And I'm like, well, he should be the guy <laughs> or like working with the guitar stuff, you know, like he should be helping coming up with the riff and everything like that. And then, um, you know, it, it just knowing that uh, is, is a huge thing. Also, when you're on tour, like having a band on stage with you, you're kind of always in a teamwork environment um in music a lot oh yeah so that's been huge uh I think there's a lot of and then like you said the discipline I think that uh you know just as much as I would get up at 6 a.m during high school and go to the gym before school and practice dribbling and shooting um that kind of stuff you know translates to now to to spending hours practicing an instrument or doing vocal lessons or spending time writing on my own to develop my craft so that when I I'm writing songs that I want to put out. I'm as good as I can be, you know? So yeah, definitely, man. It's just, it's just another craft and it's another creative thing too. Like, you know, I feel, I feel like sports and, and music and even like acting and all of those things, they're creative 
things. You know, they're not, you know, just your typical nine to five necessarily. Sure. So, so yeah, I think they definitely translate and it's, I've learned a lot from, from doing that. Yeah, man. Very well said. Very well said. And, you know, checking out like your songwriting journey, staying in high school for a second. I mean, you wrote this song far away with your friend, Austin, Austin Perdue. Um, yeah. Do you mind? I mean, the meaning with this song, I mean, beautiful meaning. And I think it's part of your journey. It, it, it actually really shows like how you became who you are today. Do you mind yeah. sharing with us a little bit, Caleb, the story of how that song came about? Totally, totally. Um, that's so funny that you say that. It, it feels so long ago. Um, yeah, that's that was like that for me. That was a time I was still in high school. I was um, I was in high school. I. It's actually funny you mentioned Austin Pardue. He's still my roommate today in Nashville. So he actually. Oh, wow. we, we're still we still live together, and uh, he helps write a lot of my songs still today. So he's an awesome collaborator. Um, but at that time, I remember like. We had met up through basketball. We were on the same basketball team. And, uh, you know, I I had always done music kind of on my own and kind of was just like a release type of thing, you know, to get my head straight. And uh, we're in the locker room one day and he starts expressing his interest in it. And I was like, wait, am I not the, I thought I was the only person in this whole county or state <laughs> that liked music because it was just not a very, um, not a, it was, it just didn't ever feel like a, normal thing uh in in the town that i'm right. from you know everyone that was the last thing they would they would be doing and um so i talked to him after the after a game and i was like hey man i i didn't know you liked music so much he was like yeah i love it and i was like well i have you know a microphone and a computer and a keyboard if you want to like ever create something he was like yeah absolutely so we started working together on just writing stuff at the time i think we were doing some rap we were doing some pop we were doing everything and uh and Far Away was um, a song that uh, I kind of wrote, or we both wrote uh, about some people who had passed in our lives. We had a, we had a, um, a really tragic story in high school about a guy um, named Gage Edwards who had passed away um, from a really bad car accident in high school. And then I had a close friend of mine who had a really bad hiking accident. Um, and so there was just a lot of, there was a lot of like, it was during a time where there was a lot of uh, grief going on in our lives. And we were like, let's, oh, we really want to do something that pays tribute to all the loss in this area lately. And um, yeah. yeah, and it was cool. A local news station picked it up and it was like, a, it was, a, it was a whole thing. So we we're really excited. And that's kind of when it kind of clicked for us was like, Hey, we know we're not great. We're no, we know we're not anything special yet, but maybe we could, but be. there's something here. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we could be, you know, maybe we could just keep working. And I think it was a really cool thing because I remember in that moment, even being like, there's no way I'm good enough to do anything with this. But in the second, there was also a part of me that was like, but I think I could, I think if I work hard enough, then, you know, just like basketball, I was always shorter. I was always, you know, but I worked hard enough to hold my own, you know? And I think that that was kind of a, the lesson of mine. I was like, if I just can work hard enough, I could maybe do something, you know? So we just kept our heads down and we kept working. We had a lot of negative feedback from people honestly a lot <laughs> and we just honestly got to the point where we didn't care and and yeah. now we're living in nashville tennessee the skill to have yeah yeah and now we're living in nashville tennessee doing what we love so it's really great it's a really cool really cool journey but it's so cool that you bring that up I, you've brought up two things already that no one has ever brought up so you're well killing you it. know no you, you're killing it caleb you know and like hearing you speak man it's like you are honestly not only an incredible talent but almost like a motivational speaker like let's go you you make us want to like break a window right now basically you know it's like <laughs> yeah. so, so kudos to you man that's part of your message that's awesome Thanks. and uh man you're being so good with your time caleb and i think you're gonna play a song for us but let me ask you about uh one day you will yeah. which is like the, the next song that's coming out uh, from when we're taping this about a week away yeah um Great message about how, you know, life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you, but you don't know it in the moment sometimes, right? Right, right. Totally. Yeah, One Day You Will is a really, really cool song. I, I love the, it was, it was honestly, it's something that I've been wanting to write about for a really long time. It was a, there was an idea, you know, I, I honestly, I felt like, I, I felt like I wrote the idea of this song maybe 10 different times. And this is the version of it that stuck because the idea of I wanted to write something to my younger self kind of and be like, hey, like, 
if I could go back and tell myself at 16, 17, 18 years old that, you know, things, you know, things do work out. Like, like it, when you're in the moment, it never feels like that. But from my experience, everything that's ever happened in my life from even being 10 years old to now has always, whenever I've been in a moment where I'm like, what do I do? There's always been, you know, I don't know. Sometimes it's a, a day, sometimes it's six months, sometimes it's two years, but I get to a point where I'm like looking back on that and almost laughing. Cause I'm like, wow, you know, I did make it out though. Like every single sure. time. So I'm, I've, you know, it's a success rate of a hundred percent. So for <laughs> myself, I'm like, well, I can't be the only one that feels that way. You know, like, um, so I was like, this could be a really, really cool idea for a song to, to write to yourself being like, Hey, when you're, when you're going through this heartbreak and you feel like one of the lyrics is when you feel like your world's hanging on by a string, you know, one day you will, one day you will get out of that. One day you will feel better. One day, all of these things that you're dealing with will just be memories and they won't yeah. be, you know, right in front of you anymore. Um, so I thought, you know, when, when I, I can't remember, I was writing with two other great writers and um, I can't remember who came up with the idea of just one day you will. But when I heard it, it's like, that's it. That's the way to say this, you know, and it's um really, really cool, really, really cool song. I'm really excited about it. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, Caleb. Well, I mean, you've been so good with your time. You're a, we can't wait to see you on the road. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you're in the mood to take us away with a song. We'd be honored. I would love to. I would love to. If it's cool, I would love to do, um, uh, it's a song called 1200 square feet. And yeah, uh, I don't know when, when this will actually be put out, but it's, it's actually going to be my following single to one day you will. Um, and I'm really excited about it. It means a lot to me. So I'm going to give that one a go. Absolutely. Uh, so bear with me. This is the first time I ever played it live for anybody. So um, bear with me. So dude. we love world premieres. So thank you. Kim. <laughs> love it. I love that. Okay. I couldn't even reach the sink to brush my teeth. was broken the winter the war long seas we'd race from the front to the back door in under three seconds we didn't have much back then but I thought it was heaven there were pictures of us on the wall and my mama complained that the kitchen was small You could hear the TV down the hall Didn't have to go far if I needed to talk I'm a million miles away tonight But I can walk through that house if I just close my eyes it was only 1,200 square feet It wasn't much it was enough for me Mom and Dad got separate places Didn't work out Lawyers and real estate agents Tears on the couch Bigger and nicer and smelled like new paint. But I'd lay awake in the darkness, remember those days when there were pictures of us on the wall. And my mama complained that the kitchen was small, you could hear the TV down the hall. Didn't have to go far if I needed to talk I'm a million miles away tonight But I can walk through that house if I just close my eyes it was only 1,200 square feet It wasn't much, but it was enough for me Complain that the kitchen was small.
can walk through that house if I just close my eyes. Was only 1200 square feet. It wasn't much, but it wasn't.